Hello and welcome to this video on proteins. Now today we're just going to have a quick introduction to proteins, an overview, and we're going to be looking at what are proteins, what they're made of, and what do they do. But don't worry if you don't understand everything today, we're just going to be going over the topics in general, and we'll cover them in much more detail in future videos. So let's start with what proteins are. They are functional molecular machines, that is they are molecules within all living systems that have a function. And we'll look at some of those functions in a minute. Now they have a 3D macromolecule structure, so they are very large and they have this 3D structure that is often quite complex and quite intricate. And they will often form complexes, so proteins quite often don't function on independently on their own. They bind with other proteins and form these these complexes that collectively have a have a function. So, as I said, they have a function, and this function comes from their structure. So they have this three dimensional structure that is incredibly linked to their function, and that is a, a key point to understand. But we will look at that in the future. And they're encoded from the DNA. So. Your DNA is, is quite often described as a code, and then your cells read this code, and from that code, they produce the proteins. And so it's the proteins that make organisms what they are from their DNA. So let's look at some types of proteins. Now, most proteins will fit into one of six groups. The first is enzymes. Enzymes are a very important group of proteins that have catalytic activity, that is they help to carry out chemical reactions. Now usually a lot of chemical reactions won't occur under biological conditions, that is like body temperature and under certain pHs or in certain environments. Now these reactions can occur through the use of these catalytic enzymes and they can be used for the breaking down or the building up of molecules, so catabolic or anabolic processes. And a good example of enzymes would be in the breakdown of glucose. So glucose gets broken down in cells and this is carried out using a number of different enzymes. The next is structural proteins. As the name suggests, they are involved in giving structure to cells and to tissues. So within the cell you have the cytoskeleton, which is used by the cell to moving things within the cell, but also giving the cell its structure and moving the cell itself. And this is made up of proteins, and in the extracellular environment, proteins can also be used for building structures such as cartilage. Receptors are important proteins involved in signaling. So this is cell-to-cell -cell signaling, or signaling with the external environment. And receptors are found either affiliated with a membrane, so they can be embedded in the membrane or in some way attached to it, or they can be inside the cytoplasm of the cell, so floating free within the cytoplasm, or they can be in the external cellular environment and can interact with stimuli there and then relay that message down. And this links quite closely with signals. Now the signals that receptors bind to can be quite varied, um, but they can also be proteins. A good example of this would be insulin. Insulin is a signaling molecule, and these signals bind to receptors, and then the receptors relay that activity down, um, which ultimately leads to a change in behavior from the cell. Antibodies are a, a group of proteins found within the immune system, particularly the adaptive immune system. And then these antibodies bind with epitopes on other organisms, so pathogens and toxins, and basically most foreign matter within the body. And they're part of the, the response from the body to these intruders. And transporter proteins are vital for cells to live. They help with the passage of large or non-polar molecules to cross membranes. So these are proteins found within the membranes, particularly the cellular membranes and internal membranes of the cell. And they help to move resources from one side of the membrane to the other. And these are often large molecules that wouldn't be able to diffuse across the membrane. 
or molecules that are polar, and because the cell membrane is nonpolar, they, they have trouble crossing that, so they use these transporter proteins to help them cross. So what are proteins made of? They're long chains of amino acids, and this is the structure of an amino acid, and you can see that it has an R group, or variable group, or sometimes called a side chain, and an amine group and a carboxyl group. And the carboxyl group is also called a carboxylic acid. Now these amine groups and the carboxyl groups react in protein synthesis, which we'll look at in a future video, to form a peptide bond or a secondary amide bond that help these molecules form chains. Now don't worry about that too much now, we'll, we'll go into detail on how that happens and and why in future videos. But these R groups are variable groups and there are 20 different R groups within uh, biological systems that give you 20 different amino acids. And by linking these 20 different amino acids in, in long chains of often hundreds or sometimes thousands of these amino acids, you can create different proteins through, with different properties and different structures. And the R groups can be quite small, so it can just be a hydrogen being substituted in there as an R group, or they could be quite large aromatic ring structures. And these different functional groups have different properties. There are four levels of structure within proteins, the primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary. And the primary structure is the sequence of amino acids. And we'll look at what the other three are in future when we look at protein structure in much more detail. And it's this sequence that determines the structure. And because we know that the sequence is determined by the DNA, so you can see how the DNA links to the structure, and we know that the structure is related to the function. So you can see how it's all starting to link together. So to conclude, Proteins are complex molecules with large three-dimensional structures and they're encoded from the DNA and they have various functions within biological systems. And the take-home message today would be that the structure of proteins denotes their function and these two are incredibly linked. And we'll look at how this is in a future video. The next time we're going to be looking at protein synthesis and hopefully this will start to bring together some of these points and make it a little bit clearer to understand. So I hope you've liked this video. See you next time.